Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant. Today we're going to be looking at processing and presets within Lightroom. So we have an image on screen in Lightroom. Uh, it's a picture of my son uh, doing some rock pool fishing on a recent holiday. And I thought I'd take you through the very sort of brief steps of how I might approach this image to process it. Now, the, my way of processing will be completely different to yours. So it's just to give you a bit of an overview of how I uh, approach uh, processing images uh, and not necessarily the exact settings. Well, then once we're happy with it, will create a preset which we can apply to other images um, if we wish to keep that same look um, and this is particularly quite uh, useful if you've got a series of pictures um, maybe for a client on a job and you need to have a similar look to each of those so the first thing I'm going to do is go to my basic panel and very simply I'm going to click on the auto tab. Now what this does, it allows Lightroom to uh, basically apply the black and white points of an image um, for you and this is a great starting point. Um, from there we're going to finally, adju finally adjust it. We can click on these two little arrows at the top here and these are our clipping warnings so this will uh, make us aware of detail that we're losing either in the highlights or the shadows and you can see here we've got a red mark on my son's shoulder that's telling me that the highlights uh, and that area are blown out now this isn't so much a big worry on this because this is like a speck in a highlight on his shoulder um, but we can do something about that if we wish uh, on this one I'm going to hold down the alt or option key and grab the highlight slider and just drag that back and you can see by pressing the alter option key it gives us a preview of the screen so we can see the highlight there in white hopefully let me just zoom in a bit and we can just drag that across and we can reduce the brightness uh, in the uh, clipping there so it's not so evident don't mind a little bit as I said it's a specular highlight there so it's not like a very important highlight with lots of detail um, same with the blacks uh, if I go to the shadow slider now and hold down the alt key at the moment we've got no clipping really at all but we can drag this down a little bit and then we can start to see some black points coming in here on the rock which is good um, so that is uh, a good spot, I think, to leave the black and white points at. We can adjust the colour, obviously, the temperature, and make it a bit cooler or whiter, or just leave it as shot. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Um, in terms of settings there, th I think those are all fine. The next thing I would do is close that off. I would come down to cal camera calibration and pick a profile. I quite favor faithful because I like my images not too contrasty um, in at this stage of the processing um, so faithful is a good one for me so I'm going to leave that one on there effects we can add a bit vignetting which is always quite good bring that down um, a, a trick that I use is to the feather is to take the feather all the way off to begin with that gives you a nice uh, nice sharp transition so you can see what you're actually moving around we can bring the um, midpoint in a fair bit and then the amount and then we can start to feather that back so we've got a nice smooth transition and that's quite nice and that all that this is doing is basically uh, allowing the center of the image to be the brightest we don't really need people's eyes to be moving around the image on the outside so this is a good way a lot of art painters use this uh, technique uh, it just means that we uh, we can um, focus our atten people's attention on the center of the image which here is where all the action is I'm gonna bring back the amount a little bit so there's my vignetting so we've done a basic adjustment camera calibration and we've gone to the effects t uh, tab and just vignetted the image um, also very important enable profile corrections uh, sometimes I'll click vertical if I think it's a little bit skew with I don't think there's much difference on this image but we'll leave that on um, and that's at this stage probably all I would do when I import my images I've got some sharpening uh, already set it's a very light sharpening so that's already set on the image so at the moment uh, unless I feel it needs a bit more uh, I generally don't play around with this one um, I'll then output 
for whatever this image is going, say for the wearable print, and apply some sharpening there. But you can, if you wish, use some of the sharpening uh, in there. And also you've got, um, of course, noise reduction as well, which on this image doesn't really need anything adjusted on it. So we've now got our image processed to where we want it, and we can turn these um, these pr uh, clipping warnings off if we wish. Um, now what we could do is have, start having a little bit more fun with the picture, and maybe add some split toning um, and other effects. So with this one, what I do is split toning. I tend to bring the... I usually start with either the shadows or the highlights, first of all. Let's start with the shadows. I'm going to bring the saturation up quite a way, so we can, just so we can see what we're doing. And, uh, and then I'm going to sort of pick a hue, which I think suits the picture. With this one today, I feel like going for a slightly sort of cyan come green effect somewhere around there which at the moment is too strong I can now pull back the saturation a little bit something like that then I can bring in a saturation for the highlights and then start to add my color wash there we want something sort of warm ish so somewhere around there looks quite good. Maybe bring on a saturation a little bit. Then finally, we can sort of uh, adjust balance, and obviously the balance is between our shadows and our highlights, and which colour we favour. So let's have a little play around. That maybe has gone a bit too green. So it's just a balancing act. We want a sort of best of both worlds. So I'm going to favour the shadows a little bit on this one, um, but maybe bring my saturation up a little bit on the highlights. Okay. So there's before. There's after quite a big difference. So once we're happy with that, we can close that down. Next thing I'm going to do is grab a gradient filter, and I'm going to drag this down across the top here, and do going to do a couple of things on this one. First of all, I'm going to change the temperature just to make a bit more blue there, very very slightly. Uh, I'm not going to adjust the exposure or anything on this one, but I am going to adjust the clarity. I'm going to bring the clarity down. Now, you may uh, see in the other video I did um, where we can use clarity and sharpness not only to add kind of sharpness and mid-tone contrast with the clarity slider to the image, we can also use them in a negative fashion like here, and that has the effect of softening the image. So, like so. Um, and that's made quite a big difference just with those two sliders being adjusted okay so there's another thing um we can come out of there now i think uh we could maybe add another one in fact let's add, let's go ahead and add another one down the bottom here we'll click on new and i'm going to drag one from the bottom up a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to leave the temperature on normal for this one, but I am going to adjust the clarity again and the sharpness just to soften that up a little bit. And again, this is helping us once again drag the viewer's attention more towards the center of the image where my son is. Um, we know our eyes are drawn to uh, areas of certain color sharpness um, and contrast so all these little effects will help us you know add impact to the right area of the image and let me just see if we can bring cloudy down a bit more don't think it needs too much there it's not doing a have a lot but it is subtle so there's another adjustment and we can now um, look and see if we need to use the adjustment brush I don't think so on this one but what I will do is come back to the effects I'm just gonna add a bit more vignette to this, maybe feather it a bit more, like so. It, like so, in Lightroom and in Photoshop, especially Photoshop, when you're using lots of layers, it's an organic process. You know, often you'll have to go back to another layer and readjust settings you set earlier um, as we, as you progress to the picture. So we're in a good spot now. So I'm just going to um, have a quick break to assess the image, see if we need to do anything else, and then I'll take you on to the next step. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with the image. One last thing I'm, I think I've decided to do is to uh, crop the image slightly. I don't think this white sky is doing us a lot of favours. So if we don't need it, get rid of it. And I think that's a bit of a stronger image. 
So now, what do we do? Let's say we love this effect, and we've got maybe three or four other images, and we want to sort of create a kind of series of pictures with the same kind of feel. Well, that's pretty simple. All we do is go to the presets up here, and we can just add the little press of the plus button, create new preset. And we'll call this one Contrast Lee at the Beach. Okay. You can call them whatever you want, um, and I've got. I, I don't make lots of presets, but sometimes, if I said if I'm on a job and it's a series of pictures, uh, rather than have to reapply everything each time, I apply the uh, a preset as a starting point again, same color grading, etc. We now got a choice here. Uh, do we want to include everything? That we've done to the image, uh, and there may be a maybe a shout to say, well, you know, I don't probably want user graduated filter on every image, so you could untick that if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave it ticked, and I'm going to leave all these ticked actually, because I think it's better just to apply everything and then uh, adjust. Every image is going to be slightly different anyway, so you will have to make some adjustments. So uh, unless there's, there's any real reason to uh, to untick these, uh, I just leave them ticked. Click on create. And we've now got our preset here, contrast at the beach. So let's go to another image in this series. And uh, let me have a look what we got. Okay. Uh, so so now let's, we could apply the same to this image. So I select the image, and then all I do is uh, click on the preset we've just made. And there we go. Same kind of look to the picture, uh, but we do maybe need to go in and maybe adjust some of these settings um, and maybe things like the vignetting as well. Um, we can perhaps add a little bit more to this one if we wanted to, like so. Um, and there you have it. So uh, it's a good starting point um, with this. Again, the graduated filter won't need the one on the bottom, so we just did uh, delete that one. This one you could come in and just adjust slightly if needed as you see fit okay so you will need to do some um, extra editing but it's a good starting point and you still got the same feel to the picture so there we have it I hope you enjoyed this rather uh, brief video but um, it helps to show you what can be created it's all about saving time and uh, with these presets they're there for a reason they're a great starting point to get you where you want to go until the next time thanks for watching cheers